you get a small time extension anyway, so it's all right. Uh, I don't know yet. So just a little long. Yeah. So I'll try and figure out the other player's name. Kalen, I need the match limit. Awesome. All right, so it looks like we have <laughs> Chris LeBlanc versus versus Rich, Rich Appenzeller. So let's jump into this gigantic thing. Favorite rarity, super rare. Again, I'm not going to try and answer questions during play. Ah, here we are. So it looks like Rich is playing. Oh, Rich is his name. Yeah, Rich, 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 yeah. <laughs> Lobbles. We're playing Lobbles. No traps. Let's see how this one goes. And Chris, as we know, is playing a Dragon variant. Dragoonities more specifically. Here we are. No, we're good. Kalen, we're good. You can start them. You can start them. Yep. We're good. Do it. Call it at 38-30. You're good to go. No. <laughs> we're starting. So 38. Yeah. You have a two-minute time extension. You're good. You got two-minute time extension. All right. All right. Let's see here. So we have Chris LeBlanc and his Dragoonity Rulers. Let's see if I can find this interesting card. Oh, he has a Garuda on there. And his Ephros, look at that, he lies to me, he just is running the exact same interesting cards. <laughs> All the interesting cards. But we do have... Alright, so Rich has opened up with a photo duality grabbing Maxi. Yeah, I'm, unfortunately, I was still looking over the deck list, so I wasn't exactly able to grab the other two cards. Presumably they were mobbles, I would assume. I mean, that is what he's playing. This ought to be fun. Dragoonity Rulers versus Lovals. Yeah, let's see what this is. So he opens up with a card card deal, a secret rare card card nonetheless. And so he's going to pitch it to draw two, and he's going to have to discard. So let's see what ends up happening here. He doesn't play any trap cards, so this will be interesting. Yeah. He does play plenty of battle stuff. Oh, Chris though. does not look happy to know that he's playing against this deck. So this is this will be a tough matchup for him. I mean, he has Maxi in hand, so that's definitely definitely a good start. So Rich is just going to go ahead and set over Monster and pass back to Chris, who draws two six cards in hand. Having to just set one against uh, against Laval is not always the greatest thing. It, I mean, it depends what it is here. It's probably, what's, what's his deck list look like? Could it be Zephyros or something? Yeah, it could be or Zephyros. Phalanx. Probably Zephyros, though. Yeah. He kind of wants that to get going in the grave or something. Well, he's using cards of consonants, discarding, I believe it was a Phalanx. After searching it out through Tempest, now he's using Ravine to ditch the Blaster. So you see Garuda on top of his deck, so he definitely doesn't have that in his hand. And there goes the Advantage Engine. <laughs> yep, yep, yep. We've started off with the Ravine. He's in good shape now. So Dux is going to hit the field. Dux effect and activate. And Rich. And Rich point. only has the one Veiler to stop that, so. And, and two maxis. He has the Maxis, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And he has one in this situation here. So he'll discard that, draw a card, and it's time he Chris's plays for the rest of the turn. In terms of other hand traps, he has two Battle Faded and three Swift Scarecrow, so this will be a very interesting match. And there goes a one day apiece. Give both, go, both players a card, no damage. Just a nice, peaceful, peaceful game between each other. This is, in fact, round five. This is round five, yep. Interesting. So here he's summoning what? He's summoning the Boost Warrior because he controls a tuner. Yeah, absolutely. And now plays Dark Hole. What's the reasoning behind this, do you think? Probably going to activate the, uh, the card. Yeah, those things affect, absolutely. Yeah, so he's, he's, he's going to have her kindling. Does that something. mean that he has all had all three handmaidens in hand? Because yeah, that, that definitely seemed like what just happened. Yeah, that is absurd. That's definitely not what Lavals want to open with.
What is the level deck list? Well, he has no traps. I can say that much. Three handmaiden, two cannoner, two cannon, a forest sprite, a lakeside lady, three blaster, three carcardy, three scarecrow, two fader, two maxi, a veiler, a boost warrior, three conduction, three rekindling, three upstart, two duality, sarco burial, darko, one day, reinforcements of the army. So where's the box? going to go ahead and special summon a copy of Blaster to the field. Banishing Phalanx and a Tempest, allowing him to search his deck for... I'm going to guess another Phalanx. I think. It, well, it, de it depends on his hand. Maybe he has a card to Constance in hand or something. I mean, we can search Phalanx, ditch that off Ravine or something. So yep. it, lots of plays here. Because with Dragoon you want to want to do your best to keep a Phalanx in the game. I mean, yeah, <laughs> naturally. That's, I mean, that's kind of the whole point of the deck. Absolutely. I wonder how handy all of these handmaidens will be for him. Probably not too much. Currently, not very. I believe so. I'm not sure, though. So. If you sign up for the championship qualifier number three, please come up to the front stage. It's about to begin. So now Ducks at the field, and let's see here. The championship yeah, instead of set handmaiden. Two. Apparently unhindered by Max Seed this time. Yep. Uh, Rich does not have... Oh, he might have Scythe Scarecrow. That's what you're talking about. The person in the chat that said Crow. Yep, yeah, he absolutely. has three Scarecrow and two Battle Faders. Yeah, there's a lot of ways battles. to stop direct attacks, so it'll be interesting to see what happens. So here's some Zephyros plays. Bouncing the Ravine, that's just a fantastic interaction. So now it would allow him to use these to go into another copy of perhaps Radriana or, yep, Radriana hits the table, brings back Phalanx and all that stuff. Just too many plays. Yeah, the addition of Zephyros has been something we've seen all throughout the day today. It's been interesting. Like yep. I said, as formats progress and players refine these type of decks, choices like that end up becoming more of the norm. Yep. Uh, in the interview that we had with Patrick here between rounds, uh, he was actually talking about the reason that they have started moving towards that is they wanted to guarantee they had the best opening play. Kind of how uh, at the beginning of the format, Dragoonerdies had the better open, always had the better opening plays or against regular Dragon Rulers, but then mm -hmm. they decided to move towards the Ancient Fairy Trigon plays, and then they started to have the better play because they could end with Drake, double Draco Sack and three tokens. So, yeah, uh, absolutely. Then, so Patrick and them have switched back to using you know Red Eyes, Garuda, and Zephyros to push their first turn play is just even higher. That yeah, makes sense. So. So, is, I think he's still under one day if he's that correct? Uh, yes, I believe he's still turn. under one day this t on this turn. So. I wonder if he remembers. I'm not sure he's making... A significant amount of plays here. It'll be interesting to see if he recalls. Is it also that's a ghost rider start us? Yeah, it looks beautiful. It looks like it's signed too. Absolutely fantastic looking. So making a field, passing eventually pass back to Rich and see like can you break it? I've got Stardust and I've got Draco Sack. Can you get through it? Yeah, Detach is here, going to go search out. He's just, essentially, he, uh, LeBlanc is just playing completely unhindered at this point. There's nothing oh, yeah, that I like says for like me to stop or anything like that. So. Yeah, look at that. I love that. You know, you search out the right level 7 monster, banish it off the field for the sword. I mean, the application of sword in that way doesn't happen often, but when it does, and you can get the extra value like through a tomb there. Fantastic, fantastic. And Dragon Ruler players everywhere wept when that tomb was not a rank 7. <laughs> yeah, I think all competitive players around the world, they were pretty happy. <laughs> yeah, Spark is indeed legal. Absolutely. CQ number 2 to be signed up for. We're waiting on 3 to the start. So, continues on. So he summons a Tempest, yeah, is he? Absolutely. 
Yeah, that card is not marked. Having a signed extra deck card does not mean a card is marked. If that was the case, then uh, a yeah, I mean, friend of mine's tune deck would be completely and totally unplayable. <laughs> not that it is by default. Exactly. But I understand. But by having it signed by Pegasus himself, it's at least, you know, has at least some sentimental value to it. Mm-hmm. Let's see what ends up happening. A Book of Moon. Oh, look at this. What? Oh, and a Battle Fader. Interesting. No damage, yep. Let's see what we end up having here. And then maybe it's too used to probably that to kill it. Yeah, absolutely. So Maxi's chain to... Was that Blaster that hit the field? So, I mean, Rich has... A lot of cards. He's got the, bur the burial. He has kindling. I mean, he, he's gonna make a play here. I mean, like Stuff's definitely gonna happen. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, but that is a lot of cards he's about to be drawing. Unfortunately for Rich, you might just have to go for it. Sometimes you just have to take the maxi challenge. Mm -hmm. and this is a tough maxi. We know, tough maxi we know Paul Cooper is definitely a fan of the maxi challenge. Yeah, so. I mean, this is a tough maxi challenge. There's Stardust and a Draco sack and a back row. I mean, not, not that Scrap Dragon and Tempest might be enough anyway. So. He ends up going into Formula and Gron, allowing Chris to draw. And that allows Chris, uh, Rich to draw. And an Upstart Goblin. Allows him to gain 1,000 life points, bringing up to 8,600 points of life. And that's a Molten Conduction Field. field. Molten Conduction Field. Yeah, double so double yeah. Foolish Burial for Lob Balls. Yeah, absolutely. I'm sure he would have loved to have that before the rekindling play. I wonder if Rich will find a way to get out of this. I mean, he's definitely in a tough position. No, no, no. no Chris popped Battle Fader in phase two, I believe. Let's see if he can. He could at least match. make Shooting Star here. Yeah, I mean, and if it reveals three tuners, yeah, attack through everything. Yeah. <laughs> so, looks like he's gonna kill the. Stardust Dragon. He's going to keep going through Max C. He's all the way into Shooting Star Dragon. So He has Shooting Star out. Chris has drawn a bunch of cards. Can, can Chris get through Shooting Star Dragon? That's a question. The ghost card was, in fact, a Stardust Dragon. A signed Stardust Dragon, nonetheless. So Chris is going to have a bunch of cards at his disposal and probably a ton of ways to deal with the Shooting Star Brad Dragon. Bateman, Eden so let's see what ends up happening here for him. Just attacking over the Draco sack, it looks like. Yep. Which is probably the safest way to play it. So yep, there comes Stardust Dragon back. So that will be, uh, what is that, 700 damage? Yeah, 700 damage. So it brings him so down below the 8,000 threshold back to 7,900. But that is a lot of cards he has in hand now. Oh, I mean, he has, he has a maxi in there. So he, he's got a lot of options. He just has to... Look over his large hand and decide exactly what way he's going to do it. I mean, he's also a quite methodical player. I know him from this area. And, oh, you see here, we have a little, nice little interaction. Stardust is going to try and pop the back row. And he's going to try and kill the Shooting Star Dragon. And then Shooting Star Dragon is going to try and kill Stardust. And Stardust is going to try and negate it. I brings up the, the Tempest and redox it. I mean, there's so many different things he can do. He can just go to Big Eye. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, there's so many different ways that Rich is just not going to be able to make a comeback. So this game is essentially over. So, um, I mean, he has one card in hand is Effect Veiler. So the one Effect Veiler. I mean, <laughs> not that Crystal has like, seven cards in hand or something. I, I think he'll be able to find a way out of this. I'm pretty sure he, if he played a second Big Eye, I'm pretty sure he could make a second Big Eye right now. <laughs> So he's just a double tribute for Red Eyes, Darkness, Metal Dragon. You don't often see that. 
and bring back Scrap Dragon. This will kill that. And that'll be the game. Yeah, so Rich is going to scoop him up. We knew uh, Chris would find a way through that there. It looked like he had so many cards at his disposal. There was Maxi Challenge yeah. failed. <laughs> yeah, I mean, see, the Maxi Challenge only works when you win. You have to go for the game. If you're going to yeah. let them have a turn, I mean, like, what's the point? So let's see what they'll be side decking into here. <clears throat> yep, let's take a look at these. So Rich has triple flying C, two Kaigi the Ghost Destroyer, two Spiritualism, three MST, Heraldi Record, Lightning, Pris Lightning Prisoning Mirror, and a Royal Decree. I forget what two Heraldry yeah. does. Yeah, I'm definitely going to look up what this Heraldi Record does. Try and figure that out. Uh, it's a counter trap when an effect of your opponent's mm. succeed is activated by detaching its own executive material, negate and destroy it. Oh, yeah, I, see. I remember this. So I that's recognize not the coming name. in. We'll probably see ref panels. For uh, Chris LeBlanc? Uh, yeah, uh, on Chris LeBlanc's side, he's got ref, pan or ref panel, maybe, because he does play uh, cards for drawing. I don't no, he doesn't have much draw card in, in his deck at all. I mean, yeah, he, I guess most of them do affect uh, both players, except for yeah. the dualities. Yeah, so, yeah, I don't but, think it's really worth it, so that definitely yeah. won't come in. That he, won't come in. Probably, I forgot what about, list I was looking at for a yeah, second. I thought yeah. I was looking at Rich. With yeah, yeah, Rich panels. would probably bring in the Flying Seas and the Kaikus or something. MSTs. Mm -hmm. I'd probably say Kaikus and MSTs. Uh, yeah. Herald, Heraldry yeah, and Flying Seas, it's not going to make as much difference, because yeah, Flying Sea, they can just synchro with it, and that's just not not ideal. Not good. Chris, however... He could pop in Matayons, he could pop in Crows. Mm -hmm. uh, MST's not going to go in at all, I guarantee, uh, most likely. Divine Wrath wouldn't be a bad idea, and Chain Disappearance would hurt pretty Oh, big time, big time. Yeah, absolutely. So let's see what we're taking. He has upstarts in his deck. You can side those out. You can side out some card card Ds, side out some number of Scarecrows and fad Faders. He has so many of them. Side out Dark Holes, kind of, mm -hmm. just kind of there. Duality can be sided out. And for Chris's, uh, let's see what he have here. Upstart Goblin can be sided out. Copies of Terraforming, copies of Cards of Consonants. He's running two Cards of Consonants. That could be sided out. Crystal Black is not playing Six Sense either. There's a lot of players here not running Six Sense. Mm -hmm. I think that is fascinating. So Mirror Force might might be a card worse. I mean, Lava Deck doesn't often just beat you down. They put out Stardusts and Shooting Stars and Quasars. Yep. And so, yeah, Mirror Force, seems like a, yeah, yeah. Mirror Force definitely seems like a card worth signing up. I talked to Billy previously. Of course, that time I took a little break, and he didn't have return in his deck. He sides return out against Evil Swarms going second. So anybody who was hoping for him to draw return wasn't even in his deck. No chance of drawing it. So definitely worth noting that Billy was not trying to draw return. Is this the last round you were streaming? Absolutely not. We will be streaming from round five, six, seven, eight, nine, and into tomorrow. We are going to be covering start to finish this entire event, round one, all the way up until the finals. We will be Absolutely. streaming live. So. We did not ban Sixth Sense at all of our events for a variety of reasons, unfortunately. I really can't say much more than that, unfortunately. <laughs> the card is legal. That's about all that needs to be said about it. Yeah, it's just it's just legal. So Let's see. It looks like both players are beginning, so we can get back. So. Looks like... Chris LeBlanc got started off. Uh, no, no, no. Off Rich started with, looks oh, like. That's the one, Rich. Yeah, I keep yeah, mixing up their names. Yeah, Rich started with some form of, looks like, Upstar Goblin and One Day of Peace. And he summons what looks like a, a Boost Warrior? Is that what that, that is? is? Uh, that is the. Uh, oh, that's a lot, was it? No, yeah, it's the cannon, I believe. Oh, the cannon, yeah. Okay, okay. It looks a little like Boost Warrior for some reason. Anyway, Chris LeBlanc is going to start with a Terraforming and search out Dragon's Ravine. So, kept in at least one copy of Terraforming. He had two originally. He's strong, open hand, Maxi, of course. So here is a so, oh, fantastic opening hand for Chris LeBlanc, the terraforming into Dragon Dragon Ruler plus seven, star, sto, seven sword, star, whatever it's called. And now, yeah, and now an upstart goblin. So you see here, again, we mentioned this earlier, just for younger players out there, players who are not quite as experienced with decks that search this much, you always want to activate the terraforming, thin your deck, the dragons are being, I know the odds aren't that high that you'll draw it, but it's still there, and over the course of a long term, you want to still mitigate all those small statistical occurrences. So take the Dragon's Ravine out of your deck, put it in your hand, one less that you can draw, and other cards in your deck that you can now draw. So Chris Blanc decides not to use the... Oh, he, oh, I see what's going on. He didn't use the Dragon's Ravine, sets two back rows, and now baits out the... Uh, using the Lakeside Lady the Lakeside to banish lady. two law balls to, to destroy. destroy yeah, something. now, yep. Luckily, Chris LeBlanc has a Phoenix Swimming Blast. Chances are he probably made a play of not playing the Ravine in order to set it up so that his Ravine doesn't die to the Lady. The lady can kill face-offs, right? Yes. So, presumably both of his cards must be chainable. 
Chris Vaughn gives a Chris re a quick read to Ma uh, that was Magma Cannoneer. Ah, uh, yes. And a uh, Barrio from Different Dimension. Destroying what isn't a Divine Wrath. Okay, so one of his back rows were necessarily chainable. The other was just simply a Divine Wrath. And now we'll have the Magma Cannoneer hit the table. Trying to special summon out a lady. To which Chris chains a maxi along in draw card. So this is one of the situations where I think Chris is just trying to draw in some gas. That, that's really what he's looking for. Oh, he has a bunch of maxis, that's why. His hand looks like he might have three of them. So that is one of the better ways to use maxi when you're looking for some resources. You have a bunch of them on top of things and I can't stymie your rich just a little bit here. So again, this is round five of the ARG Worcester Circuit Series event. We've been live all day and will continue to be live all the way up into the top eight, into the finals tomorrow. Sorry, the top 16 tomorrow, and up into the finals. Oh, yeah, hold on. The Magma Cannons. What's, what's Magma Cannons attack? Magma Cannon. I don't remember off the top of my head, actually. Yeah, we'll look this one up. Magma Cannon here. 1,700. No, it's a uh, can... Uh, oh, so we had them mixed up. It's Lava Cannon that you need to look up, not Cannon here. That's oh, cannon I'm sorry. Is the one that yeah, all these Lavas. So people say 16, but we'll see. Lava Cannon. It is, in fact, 16. Yeah. So... All the levels are quite similar, if I do say so myself. So we're almost at 1,800 players. I wish Joe could make me lunch. Interesting. I make good lunch. Anyway. Sanjay. Wanjay13. Happy? Uh, let's see here. Upstar Goblin. Yep. Yeah, I've seen lots of Patrick Hoban's favorite card this weekend, that's for sure. His Dragon Ravine hits the table. I think I've said that about 20 times. Sorry. Pitches failings and asks for a response. Yeah, it's good and Chris is able to send a Redox to the graveyard. Loading up some of the colors he did not originally have, and now this is a Dux. Let's see what happens here. Which only has two cards in hand. Doesn't look like either of them are a Maxi or Effect Veiler, so Phalanx is going to hit the table. And it looks like we're probably going to Badriana at this point. Yeah, Badriana. Presumably there'll be no response on Rich's side. Yep. Hits the table. And now uh, Mistletane. A very strong opening here. Very strong play here from Crystal Block. Bringing it, being able to bring back the Phalanx. Going to the Atum. Play we've seen again and again throughout this format. Several times throughout the day. Uh, like, I mean, he's filling this through his extra deck. Examining his graveyard, perhaps. Perhaps he doesn't want to go to Atum. Nope, he's going to bring back M7. Let's see what he, got, what, he, what he can do. Uh, and that's the Heraldic Record. Yep. When it exceeds material monster, detaches to activate, it negates and destroys. Is that correct? Yes. It'll negate it, and if you do, destroy it. And if you do, absolutely. So that's going to hit the graveyard, hit the bin, and Chris LeBlanc's going to have to reassess the situation. Presumably, I believe Chris is. I was talking to the player to come up with a situation where he understood that there was probably some type of defensive back row or some type of interesting defensive card. I know Rich isn't playing any traps in the main deck, but some way, shape, or form, his original play was going to be stymied, and now he can go over the top. And that's really what a lot of it is, baiting out whatever the backer is, and you're just going over the top. Now, the score is out. Chris has won the first game, and Rich is trying to fight back here in game two. Yeah. As you can see in the top left and top right corners of the screen, there's a number one next to Chris and a zero next to Rich. That indicates the game in which you're in and who has won the games thus far. So Crimson Blader hits the field, and Effect Veiler is discarded from Rich. So, I mean, Lavos, Lavos, three Kindlings are card. So, Cannon's going to get destroyed, and Rich is going to take 1,200 points of damage, dropping him to 8,800 points of life. And he'll be under the effect of Crimson Blader over the course of the next turn. So, Shooting Star Dragon and Quasar and such will not hit the field. Oh, yeah, Effect Veiler, touche, touche. Oh. Rich presumably would then have a way to put those on the field because there would be no other reason to use Effect Filler in that situation. 
Why did he not bail out the Draco sack? Well, presumably he'll have some way of summoning large creatures on his upcoming turn to where Crimson Blader dealing damage would have been too detrimental to his play. I mean, it looks like he might have rekindling in his hand. I think it's a maxi and a rekindling. I'm not entirely sure, though. Well, Chris is going to set at least one back row. He's probably going to pass back to Rich here after examining his extra, or his removal play pile. What are these guys' records right now? Best of my knowledge, they're both undefeated. Well, there are the live feature matches, which, of course, you can watch live here on Twitch TV, but there will be YouTube and written feature matches. The written feature matches presumably have been going up on the website, and the video yep. matches will be going up over the course of the next week or so. So there will be videos all over the place you'll be able to find, coverage all over the place. So, of course, the rekindling hits the field. Chris plays the max scene. Let's see how far this goes. Librarian. All right. Well, if Rich is going into Librarian, chances are Chris is going to be drawing a lot of cards this turn. Summon Swift Scarecrow. Yeah. Probably going into Formula Synchro, being able to draw two cards on his side and only one card on Chris's side. It's not often you can advantageously draw cards when your opponent has discarded Maxi, but Rich has found a way. Formula Synchron with Librarian now. So let's see what Rich has found. Now he's sending the Librarian to the grave to summon what looks like a Stardust Dragon, letting Chris draw yet another card. Looks like he has five or six, and now these two will go into Shooting Star. So, again, going into the Shooting Star Dragon, as we talked about yesterday, it's, it's obviously a strong card, but if your opponent's drawing seven cards or six cards or five or how many he just allowed, I'm not sure how beneficial that is. Because now he only has a couple cards in hand, and Chris has a big stocked hand. I mean, I guess if he hits five tuners off the top, that might change my opinion of this. <laughs> that would definitely change my opinion on it. Book of Moon on shooting star. Yeah, so now Rich invested everything in shooting star dragon, and Chris LeBlanc is just in dominating position now. So, looks like Chris might be able to pull this one out. He's got another huge hand here. Huge graveyard filled with dragons, filled with level, with elements. Filled with everything he would need to really mount an impressive, impressive turn to seal this game. I mean, Rich is at 8,800, which is a considerable amount, but oh, he just drew a turn. So, I mean, even if something happens, I mean, I think this game is just, I think this game is essentially over. I, I mean, almost no matter what Chris does this turn, I think Rich is going to scoop him up. He preemptively scooped the previous game, so I don't see why he wouldn't do it here. So, use the Dragon Dravine, still trying to get the value. I mean, the game's not technically over yet. It's essentially over, but if you can get more value, there's no point in not. So, Ducks hits the field, allowing him to bring back the Phalanx. And Rich has no max season. Now, Chris knows the coast is clear. Oh, no, never mind. There was a max season. So, th th this will be interesting. Now, Chris is in. Now, what are they talking about here? Some type of dispute here with the judges. Oh, they're talking about the position that Phalanx had to come out of. So, let's see what Chris can muster up. Like, worst case scenario, he just passes and has returned versus just a few cards in hand. So, I wasn't aware that Rich had the max seed to stymie Chris a bit, but we'll see what ends up happening. So, attacks Crimson Blader into Shooting Star Dragon, so he has no way of fearing any of the Shooting stars or quasars or anything like that can come out and we'll lock them out of any other level eights. The bread and butter of the lava deck. So, we'll all push in for a bunch more damage and 
You see, Richard's running a bunch of Swift Scarecrows and Battle Faders, so he might be able to stall it out, but at this point... And then Ducks has 17, 19, right? 19. Yes. And Ducks is 19. So, so let's see. Rich is drawn for his turn, and he's going to try and find a way to get out of the situation. He'll start with a banishing the lady from the graveyard, destroying a miscellaneous back row, which I can't really make out right now. He'll discard Blaster and a Fire to destroy Crimson Blader. Now uh, he's just down to two cards and uh, summon card card D. So this is a play. Can I draw into my Scarecrow or my Battle Faders? So Chris says, yeah, I have no problem with that. Draws two. Let's see if he gets there. He drew a Kindling and... Battle Fader. Unbelievable. What an impressive two cards to draw. Oh, Divine Wrath. That might be able to seal this game. I think that's the game right there. Yep, Divine Wrath seals it for Crystal Block. A fantastic, fantastic use of Divine Wrath there. Really stops that Battle Fader. That would have been incredible. He literally drew a card card to Battle Fader from the Rekindling. Look at Double Rekindling in hand. Oh, man, he just flops Double Rekindling over. All right, that was a good